To begin the ceremony, please rise for the presentation of our nation's colors and the singing of our national anthem by police officer Jason Martinoff. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight? For oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets were our bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, said as that star-spangled banner yet wave Oh, the land of the free And the home of the brave A warm and sincere greeting to our uh, families of the fallen heroes. We're grateful to be here with you to share in this tribute. Welcome to the men and women currently serving on the police force, and welcome to our elected officials. To those of you who came out to share this today, thank you. Five years ago, Sal, Marlene, Jerry, and I started this memorial event to recognize and remember those officers who made the ultimate sacrifice for us, for our families, for our children, and for our community. Collectively, we owe them a huge debt, one which we can never, ever repay. But we can honor them, we can remember them, and we can keep their memories alive. And we can give thanks to have had them even so briefly with us. Thank you, and God bless you all. Now we will go into the heart of the program, which why we are all here today. Police Officer Henry Wahlberger, 1964. Henry and his family will be coming up. I'm Henry. This is my sister Debbie and my brother Scott. Our father was killed in 1964. Um, me and my brother both decided to come on the police department. Our mother had just asked us, uh, don't have a discretion for this name. And I wish she was here today to see all of this. Because when my dad died, they weren't doing things like this. This is beautiful. I, I can't believe that they've gone through all this trouble just to remember all of the families and all of the officers who were killed in the line of duty. And the guys and girls wearing the uniform today, God bless you all. Stay safe out there. <clears throat> just want to thank everybody in attendance today. Thank you. Thank you. 
Officer Thomas Shimenti Jr., 1979. Would his wife Diane like to join us? I'd like to thank everyone for being here today. Um, this is a very special day. Of course, my daughter would be up here. She's got, you know, that whatever it takes to be up here, but I want to thank everybody that puts this together. And I'd like to thank my brothers and sisters from uh, Rowing Thunder, who are the most marvelous group of people you could ever want to meet, aside from all these wonderful police officers that sacrifice every day. God bless you all. Police Officer Charles Ferris, 1983. Would his daughter Nancy like to join us? <laughs> Detective Kenny Fung, 1997. Would his wife Michelle and son Kenny and family like to come up, please? I'd love to thank everybody for coming and never forgetting Kenny. Men in uniform, politician, it really touches my heart every year for the past five years. And I'm proud to say Kenneth just retired April 30th after 25 years of dedicated service. Thank you all. Police Officer Gerard Carter. 1998. Would his wife Josette like to join us? I always try to compose myself when I come up here to speak, and a lot of my friends, politicians, and brass who support me in everything that I do in Gerard's name. Um, 20 years, it'll be 21 July 31st. We have four more years to keep his killer behind bars. And I just hope that everyone supports us in making sure that that happens. Thank you for the one to one for always doing this. And in memory of my caddy, I love you guys. Thank you. Police Officer Matthew Dzergowski, 1999. Would his wife Maria and family like to join us? I would just like to thank everyone for being here today. And it is a special day since this is run by the community, which is very unusual. And uh, on behalf of my late husband, I'd like to thank everyone for taking such good care of myself and my two boys. Thank you. Police Officer John Kelly, the year 2000. Would Nicole Kelly like to come up? Every year I don't stand up and say something, but I feel the need to just thank each and every single person here. Um, I'm going to get emotional, but thank you from the bottom of my heart for, for everyone being here. Police Officer James Leahy, 2001. Would his mom Jeanette and family like to come up? I would like to thank everyone for coming here, for everyone participating in this beautiful day. It's very heartbreaking, but it's very comforting to see how everyone remembers all our fallen officers. 9-11 was a very bad day for everyone. And my son didn't have to go in to that building. He was the only New York City police officer who lived on Staten Island but worked in Manhattan. 
When he saw that first building get hit, him and his partners ran. He ran into the building, even though his partner said it was dangerous. He said, the firemen need my help, and that's when he went in. Jimmy was that type that was always there to help everyone, no matter who you were. He never looked at your color of his skin or how anything or how you lived. He only looked what was underneath. And that's the way I want everyone to think of him and love him. He, his children are grown now and have families of their own, which is very heartbreaking. But we will never forget the sacrifices that all our men and women did on 9-11. And we want to thank everyone. I just want to thank Marlene, Bob, Jerry, and Sal for putting this together every year and bringing the community together in remembrance of our fallen officers. And a special thank you to the NYPD because they really back the words they never forget and always remember. And after 9-11, our house was flooded with officers and to this day, they always come up to us and say, whatever you need, we're here for you. And they stand behind that. Detective Salvador Cafiso, the year 2002. Would his wife Kathy and family like to come up? I'd just like to say thank you. And we lost our beautiful son. And this is Kathleen and his beautiful daughter, just his wife. And we're just so grateful to everyone here. And we miss our son every single day. But we know that he's always with us. There's always something that says, I'm here, Ma. I'm here, Dad. I'm here, Kathleen. I'm, I'm here, Alyssa. And when I, got up, when I got up today, I knew he was with us because I got up, I put on a yellow shirt, and when I saw my granddaughter, I knew that he was saying, there, there you go, I'm here with you. And I'm sure that you feel it all the time that your children are with you and that they're saying, hi, Ma, hi, Dad, hi, my beautiful daughter, hi, my beautiful wife. So thank you so much for today, and we appreciate it. Monsignor Romano is always helping us, too, and all the police officers. And thank you so very much. Thank you. Sal was loved by everyone he met. And, but to me and his family, he was our world. And as we get through our 17th, 17th year without him, we notice that many people have forgotten. But it means so much that Staten Island will never forget. And they remind us every year, every day, that they will never forget. And thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Detective William Titus, 2003. Would his wife Lisa and son Corey like to come up, please? Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I just want to say um, thank, thank you, everyone, for coming. It is really great to see everybody gather together, and um, you know, just never forget. Like the NYPD has really made a good job of doing. Um, I consider it an honor uh, in my decently short career with the police department thus far to carry my father's shield. And uh, on another note, I heard uh, one of the elected officials mention the victim compensation fund. Um, it's crazy to me that. You know, all the things this government will put money to, but uh, they find it very easy to forget uh, the men and women that put everything on the line and are sick, and like my father, who succumbed to his illness. So whoever's listening, I just hope whoever has the power to make sure that's signed, that they, uh, that they do so. Thank you. Police Officer Kevin Lee, 2006. Would Kevin's parents, Gilbert and Catherine, like to come up? I would like to thank my Blue family for never forgetting my son, Kevin. That's all he wanted to be was a police officer. 
He started his career in the 122 precinct as an auxiliary police officer for five years before he entered the police academy. I am very proud of what he has done. And I just want to thank my Blue family. We never knew how big our Blue family would be and all the survivors that I've known and meet every day. Thank you for the support and thank you all the police department for never forgetting my son. Thank you. Detective Russell Timoshenko, 2007. Would his parents Tatiana and Leonid like to come up? Good afternoon. I would like to say thank you so much from bottom of our hearts for such a beautiful, beautiful event. For us, for families, friends, relatives who lost a loved one, it means a lot. Thank you so much, everyone who is here. Thank you so much who organized this beautiful event. And God bless all and please be safe. Thank you so much. Sergeant Alex Baez, 2008. Would his son Rex and family like to come up? Okay. Next, I understand uh, this police officer's name was already mentioned, I believe, but his family is here. Lieutenant Gerard Rex, would the family members like to come up? Thank you. Um, thank you very much for coming. Um, this is the type of thing my father would drag me to in, throughout his career. He did 38 years. He loved this job. He loved it so much that he convinced me and my brother to both come on ourselves. And on a personal note, I'd like to thank everybody for showing up and everybody for organizing it. This is a great event in a day and age where you know a lot of cops feel like <clears throat> that people don't appreciate what they do every day. Um, it's just really nice that everybody out here shows their support. Um, and like like so many others, my father's a product of uh, destructive 9-11. So, um, you know, this keeps happening more and more every day, and we're seeing more and more people getting sick. So please keep everybody in your prayers. Thank you. Detective Michael Morales, 2009. Would his wife Sylvia, son Andrew, and family like to come up? Thank you. I'd like to thank just everyone that's here though, today for this beautiful honor and for the beautiful memorial that we had a couple of weeks ago for my husband. And I'm sure he's with us here today. I just want to say thank you. It's a beautiful ceremony and we should never forget. Thank you. Sergeant Harold Smith, 2011. Would his wife Margie like to join us? I'd just like to say thank you for all the support that your wife Judy gives us. Thank you. Admin TEA Eugene Hurricane, 2012. Would his wife Colleen like to join us? Sergeant Donald Koniff, 2015. Would his sister Lynette and family like to join us? <laughs> Detective Michael Glazer, 2016. Can I call up his wife Margaret and family, please? Thank you for rem remembering my husband and all the other families, and God bless all of the men and women of the NYPD. God bless America. I just want to say, this is, um, this is Baby Michael. His name is for our father. And um, 
he was born a year after he succumbed to his illness. Say hi. And um, I just hope that he can be half the man that our father was. Um, it's so important now more than ever. Let's support our NYPD mental health because cops are killing themselves at alarming rates, and we need to do better than this. So please end the stigma of mental health and support our police. Thank you. Captain Carmine Cantalino, 2017. Would his wife Jackie and family like to come up? Chief William Ali, 2018. His wife, Diane. Good afternoon. On behalf of the Ali family, they'd like to express their thanks to the NYPD, the community, as the memory of Chief Ali lives on in so many. I've been a longtime family friend of the Ali family. It was an honor and a privilege to have known the chief. I met the chief under circumstances where he needed a doctor's appointment or a 9 appointment. And when I said to him, you need to come into the office, sir, he said, you don't understand. I can't leave my men. And that is what I take with me every day. He loved his job. He loved his men and women, and he dedicated his life to this city that he loved. Diane, Diana, Tini, and family, his legacy lives on. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Well, now you know why we do it, and you know why we uh, we spend so much time on going through, we go through the same pain in organizing this event. For all the congestion that we have on Staten Island, for all the traffic and the taxes, there's no place better to be than right here because we're different. And we're different because of the things we do and why we do them. The families that are here today is truly an honor to be in your presence. Each one of you represent a true hero in our society. Those who believe that our society is a community worth protecting as they lay down their lives to protect strangers. Today, we memorialize their efforts and we applaud their beliefs as we honor their sacrifice. We are saddened and angry of how they left this earth. Yet we have some solace in knowing all the good they accomplished while they were here. The lives they touched, the people they helped, the families they loved, and the families that loved them. This ceremony is a torch that lights the way for each of us as they ought to be remembered. The just, the honorable, the courageous, as heroes. For the heroic names presented today we are their voices. They live on in each of us. As such, we implore our elected officials, our great elected officials, to ensure that those who harm police officers never have the opportunity to walk our streets again. To our families here today, yes, we are indebted to you. And we hope this annual ceremony shows in some way how important each of you are and how their actions and sacrifice will never be forgotten. Thank you all for coming. I just want to say thank you to everybody that's here. Staten Island is a very close-knit. I, I look at people in the audience, uh, friends of mine that retired uh, from this job. I, I coach people in the, in the audience that I coach baseball with. Uh, it, it affects a lot of people, what you guys are going through, and we can never understand that. But we will continue to do this, I promise you, like last year and the year before. Um, there's a lot of people that help us do this, and I'd just like to mention real quick who they are. 
At this time, I'd like to bring another community member, uh, Scott Lebeo, he's an artist. Scott decided to paint something very nice and to present it to the borough commander. At this time, Scott, can you show us what you need with your talent, please? It's called Staten Island Remembers. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the to the oceans, wide with foam, God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my home, sweet home.